The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and preceded him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hands and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land of Genezareth, when the men at, of that place recognized him. They sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were, who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak. And as many as touched it, touched it, were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Many who touched the clock of the Lord were uh, healed. And then this is the tradition that we can see in many cultures, especially for the Hispanic and for the Filipinos. We, when we come to the church, if we are sick, we try to touch the images, and statues of, um, of saints and also of Jesus Christ and our Blessed Mother, hoping that uh, He will also be healed. That's where the tradition comes from. Today we celebrate the memorial for the feast day of St. John Mary Vianney. When I first uh, entered uh, the seminary, I went to St. Mary Vianney Theological uh, Seminary before I went to St. Patrick uh, Seminary in Menlo Park. St. John Vianney was uh, born in French town of Dardley in 1786 and he was baptized on the same day and during the uh, French Revolution many uh, priests or the church were prohibited from celebrating mass but many loyal priests they go in, in hiding from the government they carry out the sacrament in their parishes. 
and for the parents of St. Mary Vianney, John Vianney, in order to attend Mass, they have to travel to distant farms where they were hiding so they could uh, pray in secret. And since the priests priest their lives day by day, St. John Vianney began to look upon priests as heroes. His uh, first communion were publicly carried out in public homes by three uh, priests who catechized him. And he made his uh, first communion at the age of 13. And during the Mass, the windows were covered so that the soldiers could not see the light of the candles. So this is how secret they do their uh, celebrations and how fortunate we are today that we can still come to the church and pray. It's unfortunate that uh, many parishes, even in our diocese and many churches around the United States, uh, some are prohibited from uh, celebrating. In our diocese, uh, many churches are doing masses outside the church. And St. John Vanet, when he became a priest, he realized that the French Revolution resulted to religious ignorance. Many people were not doing the way it should be. And, and uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, I mean people will, uh, were doing things that is uh, not uh, taught by the church and so he gave homilies on blasphemy and also in dancing in his parishioner if his parishioner did not give up uh, these things, he refused to give them absolution. And St. Vianney came to be known as a good confessor, even outside of France. And people from distant places traveled to his parish to consult him. So many pilgrims, number of pilgrims, uh, as many as 20,000 a year during the last 10 years of his life uh, came to him for confession. And he spent, they said that he spent like 16 to 18 hours a day in the confessional. That's a lot of hours. And uh, he spent uh, even during winter time, he spent 11 to 12 hours. And uh, St. John Benet was uh, declared when he died on August 4 at the age of 73. Uh, Pope Pius X declared him blessed and uh, he proposed also St. John Vianney as a model for, uh, to the parochial clergy. And then in 1925, Pope Pius XI canonized him. And finally in 1928, he, made, he was made patron saint of a Paris priest, of a Paris priest, uh, and so uh, every August 4, we celebrate this memorial of St. John Vianney. Also, in the Gospel this morning, we heard uh, uh, Peter uh, began to sink as he began to doubt. Our faith, you know, 
should uh, never falter, even in times of difficulty. This time of uh, pandemic, a lot of people were worried, anxious about the future. Uh, we know difficulties and problems are enormous during this time, but we should not lose our sight of Christ. When Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus, it was okay because he's focused on Jesus. But seeing the wind and the storm, he was afraid. And he began to sink. But then he cried out, Lord, save me. You know, amidst of dangers and obstacles and doubt, our focus should be on Christ. And so let us approach him with patience. Let us run with patience to the fight set before us. And looking forward to the author of life, the author of our faith. Christ should be a clear, sharply defined figure for us. We have contemplated him so many times that we cannot confuse him with something else, just as the apostles confused him as ghost. As the disciple did that night when they saw Christ walking on the water. His features, his voice, his gaze are unmistakable. And he has looked at us so many times. God cared for us, for each one of us. He is the beginning and the culmination of our Christian life. What's more? Together with Christ, the conflicts and labors we confront daily should strengthen our faith and our hope and should unite us closely to Him. When Peter in the Gospel stopped looking at Christ, he began to sob. But he knew to return immediately to Him whom all is submitted, when he said, Lord, save me. So in times of troubles, in times of you know, difficulties and problems, we should call on him, ask him, call on him, Lord, save me. St. Peter cried out with all his strength, when he felt all was lost. And that's what we should do when we feel like all is lost. And Jesus, with infinite affection, stretched out his hands and fold him up. If we see that we are sinking to all these uh, temptations, to our weaknesses, our difficulties are overwhelming. Call on Him. Lord, save me. Jesus will always stretch out His hand to us for us to hold tight. He will never let us sink. If we do the little required of us, God will always be there. God has also placed our guardian angel next to us to help us in all adversity and to serve us a powerful aid on our way to heaven. Please stand.